Got the hole saw installed and the drill bushing, and I'm prepping to drill the hole in the face of the machine. Welcome to ArcZone's video channel. Hey guys, Jim with ArcZone. I'm here today to talk to you about ArcZone's upgrade kits for the Miller Diversion 165 and 180 power sources. So there's a large number of these power sources out here and they're a great little entry level machine. But what I've learned in my shop is you can take this machine to the next level by making a few simple upgrades. Currently ArcZone offers three upgrades for the Miller Diversion. And what we're gonna talk about today is the upgrade for the front of the machine to the female panel mount connectors for air and water cooled torch and work lead connections. We're going to convert this machine. Okay. So how do we do that? Let's get started. Okay. So I want to make one thing clear. This is not an authorized or supported by Miller Electric and it may void your warranty. That said, we strongly believe that it is an improvement for your welding machine. So before we get started, the first thing you want to do is disconnect the power cord from the wall. Okay. I've already loosened up all the fasteners and everything on the face of the machine and removed the old torch and the connector for the uh, switch control. Remove the uh, cover of the machine and the torch and related connectors. We're ready to get to work installing the female panel mount connectors for the torch and the work lead. So to do that, we're going to tape off the face of the machine to protect the integrity of the, and the fit and the finish of the machine. And then we're going to drill these two holes out. Okay guys, so I'm going to remove the uh, work lead connection from the power source and to do that you need either a Phillips number two or a eight millimeter wrench. There's a small screw, you unscrew that and then I use an adjustable wrench to loosen this uh, through bushing on the face of the machine and just pull the work lead out. The next step is to cut the work lead connector. I have a pair of side cutters here for copper wire and snip that right there and what I did is I cut it right where the registration point was where the uh, strain relief for the uh, work lead on the chassis mount so there's a little registration mark on there where it gripped down I just cut it right there and what we're going to do now is install this connector that's supplied with the arc zone uh, upgrade kit and this is a, a copper uh, terminal connector with a set screw for the new work lead okay so I'm just going to strip this back. Just want to be careful not to cut the copper stranding. And just get enough of the copper so it goes into the um, terminal connector. And looks like it uses like an eight millimeter socket wrench. Tighten that up. And I'll double check that later. But that's your internal work lead connector for the, from the chassis of the machine to the new female panel mount connector. We'll show you how to hook that up later. All right, guys, so now we're gonna drill, prepare to drill the front of the machine out to accept the new panel mount DINs connectors. You can use just a standard paper masking tape or blue tape or a duct tape. Uh, or you can just try it without it. But uh, I suggest you do protect the front of the machine. So we're gonna do that with just some duct tape. Tape this off. Okay guys, so don't laugh too hard, but I got the front of the machine taped off. It doesn't look so good, but the idea is to protect the uh, area around the holes that you're gonna enlarge. Now, there's two holes on the front of the power source. We wanna enlarge those to receive this insulating connector for the Panama connector. And this is a 30 millimeter diameter, not a standard size. So probably not something you have in your tool kit. So there's a couple different ways to do that. Now, we've sold a couple of these kits and then we got feedback from customers that told us exactly how they modified the power source. And we thank you very much for that. It really helped us. So what we've done is we've incorporated the parts you need to do the install of the upgrade kit. And we want you to be as successful as possible. Now, if you have a uh, unibit in inch and 3 16 diameter, you could use that. But again, these are expensive. I think I paid around $91 for this and uh, definitely, you know, you spin a wallet bearing on that. So what we've done is we've included a, a 30 millimeter hole saw and a Delron bushing. And the Delron bushing is gonna center the hole saw in the hole and uh, allow you to drill it without any wander. 
Okay, so we're ready to drill the holes in the face of the machine. Now this machine's on a cart, so I've locked the wheels down and it's up against the wall so it won't slide back. You want to make sure that the machine is, a, is in a solid position and uh, get your drill. Got my uh, heavy duty craftsman drill I inherited from my dad. Thanks dad. Got the hole saw installed and the drill bushing and ready to start drilling. Okay, so the bushings did their job. The lower housing, the upper housing, these are the pieces that came out of the face of the machine. Got a nice clean cut. Okay guys, so on our panel mount connector from ArcZone for the diversion upgrade kit, there is a internal insulating bushing that goes on the inside of the chassis and an external that accepts the female DINs receptacle. Now, if you'll notice, there is a quarter inch hex relief on here and we need to cut one of those into the face of the machine. Now this relief allows the insert to go into the chassis and keeps it from turning when you tighten the connector, okay? So it's really important that you have that hex uh, cut into the chassis of the machine. Now to do that, we're gonna use some simple hand files and uh, some good old fashioned elbow grease. Okay, so I made a very basic mark on the front of the machine and basically what you need is about a quarter inch by quarter inch hex relief. So I'm going to do that and we're going to line it up on the six o'clock position so that you can apply plenty of downforce to the uh, file and get a nice clean cut rather than, you know, try to do up at, you know, say 12 o'clock. So six o'clock, do a very basic file, start it with, with this large file and then finish it with a small square. I did this with simple hand files and it took less than a minute. I'm sure that uh, you guys have some other tools you may use, a rotary tool or whatever. This is what I used and it worked great. Okay, so I've got the notches cut in uh, both the uh, ports on the machine and you can see that the insulator pops right in. Okay, so we're gonna wrap this up now. I'm gonna deburr the, uh, the, the holes in the front of the machine just to make sure they're perfect. Remove the tape, clean up the grinding debris and the cutting uh, shards and uh, then begin the assembly process. Okay, so we're ready to install the panel mount DINs connectors. Again, we give you everything in the kit. Connectors come with uh, high quality uh, brass and bronze washers, so you get maximum conductivity. Basically, we're just gonna remove the large nut and the star washer and the insulator for the back side of the chassis. The red for the positive goes on the bottom where the work lead fits nicely. Then the insulator, the female portion on the inside of the chassis of the machine and make sure that you get that insulation piece indexed into the um, hex on the panel mount connector. I'm gonna install the large nut and then tighten that down. And I'm gonna do the same for the torch connection. These are uh, hex molded, so you can put the uh, pickup point wherever the DINs connector orientates wherever you want, you know, at 10, 12, 2, or 6 o'clock. Insert that into the face of the machine. Fits nice and snug. Then the insulation piece, the star washer, and the retaining nut. Now we're going to install the work lead connector. And again, the work lead was terminated with a uh, copper lug to the motherboard with an 8 millimeter and Phillips head screw. On the other end, the cable just came through the power source right to the work lead clamp. We cut that and installed this um, connector here for the work lead. So we're going to take and screw this onto the chassis of the machine. And again, we give you a high quality washer and a star washer. The star washer is going to go on the back side of the connection to lock this insulator, I mean to lock this bushing in place. And tighten that up. Now you want to rotate this up to where it doesn't interfere with the uh, torch connection and it doesn't come in contact with any of the chassis of the machine, okay? So I've ro rotated that up and then I'm going to tighten this down and then make this connection on the motherboard.
for the work lead. Now I want to make sure that's good and tight, so I am going to use the uh, wrench. Okay, so that's a work lead connection. Now I did have to bend this power eyelet here when I was filing the face of the machine, so I'm going to straighten that back out and use the uh, washers and that installed or included in the kit. Okay, so we're going to use a star washer on the back side of the connection and the uh, copper and bronze washer on the front. And again, this is the uh, connection for the torch. Get that close and then tighten it up. And there you have it. Panel mount connectors installed and all buttoned up. Now, when you remove the factory torch, there was this braid or insert on the front of the machine. We want to take that out. We're going to replace that with the uh, female connector for the argon. And again, we give you all the fittings to do that. A flat washer on the face of the machine, one on the back, then the barbed hose nipple. Thread that on. We're going to tighten this up. Then we're going to make our gas connection on the inside of the machine. Okay, so I've got that tight now. Now it's a pretty long push to get that hose up on there. So I would recommend a little bit of soapy water. And again, this is not gonna cause any contamination in your argon delivery system. It just evaporates over time. So you wanna make sure you install the stainless steel hose clamp onto the hose, and then just simply push the rubber hose onto the fitting. And make sure it lands all the way up to the face of the, of the connector and then just simply tighten the uh, hose clamp down and that's your argon connection. Okay, so we've got the bonnet back on the machine. We've got all the connections updated on the face of the machine. You see how nice that looks? Simple work lead connection in and lock. The TIG torch connection. Again, the beauty of this, you get to choose from the popular TIG torches, flex head, rigid, modular, whatever you want. Install the gas connection. Tighten that up. And there you have it. A high performance Miller Diversion 165 or 180 upgrade kit from arczone.com. Be sure to subscribe to ArcZone's YouTube channel to stay up to date on tricks of the trade, industry news, and the latest tools and trends. Thanks for watching and good welding.